Joe Rogan spoke to Dave Rubin, and um, Rubin took a pretty far-right stance on the issue of anti-discrimination protections for gay people. It's completely against what would be your uh, line of thinking as a libertarian. You would never want the government to force someone to do a specific uh, task. You're talking about the gay the, couple yeah. that wanted a wedding cake made? Yeah. Yeah. What's, what's your position on that, by the way? Um, well, there's two issues. One issue is that this they apparently went to places they thought would deny them mm -hmm. so that they can make a story out of it. Yeah. It wasn't as simple as a loving couple went to some place, they wanted to get a cake made, and the people said no, and they're like, what the fuck? No, they wanted a story. And so they, they sought out places that they thought were going to deny them, and then they made a giant national event out of it. I don't think people should discriminate to the point where they're not going to make someone a cake. I mean, I think there's but something fucked up about it. do you think the government, the, do you think no. the government the should The government tell, government shouldn't yeah. step in, no. Yeah. I think you should let people know publicly that these, these are people that they discriminate against gay people. And so if you want your dollars to represent your opinions and your feelings on things, maybe you shouldn't buy a cake from these folks that don't want to make a, a cake for gay people. But the, the yeah. idea the government's going to step in... It seems crazy to me. But then as soon as I say that, I go, okay, well, what if they wouldn't make a cake for black people? Should the government step in then? So, okay, so there's a couple right? things. Right, so there's a couple things there. So first off, it, it was about the specifics of the cake. I know this, and a lot of people are going to get into the nitty gritty of every mm -hmm. legal part of this thing. But it was about a specific, it wasn't that he wasn't going to sell them a cake that was on the shelf, right? He didn't want to make them. He didn't want to make uh, them a cake for this wedding. Now that's asking him to do something that's artistic or that's not... What was, if, the, what was the variables? Like, they, did he want two men? So I apparently, hands so apparently, the, the conversation actually never got to that point because he denied them before that because he knew what it was going to be. So it never got to like, oh, are you going to draw us cake. together or whatever? But he right. knew it was going to be a gay wedding. So now, he look, just said, no, I'm not making a cake for a gay wedding. Right now, look, but they could have bought a cake that was there. So what if like, it was an interracial wedding? Would you have a, more of an issue with that? So, so here's the deal. So it's. Look, we have the Civil Rights Act of 1964. You have to serve people based on race and uh, all of the minority statuses that there are. I'm not for relitigating that, mm -hmm. but uh, but there are there is a libertarian argument that basically would say we don't need those laws anymore because the the Civil Rights Act was in response to Jim Crow laws, where states in the South had discriminatory laws. So we had the federal government come in and clean that up for everybody. So you have to serve everyone equally. You can't deny a black couple to come into your restaurant, or you you have so to. So why can you why can you deny a gay person then? No, because but it was a specific thing. It was a specific. So look, look put it put it this way if you had a if there was a jewish artist who took commissions uh for paintings would you force that person to be uh to paint neo-nazi signs of course not you would never have the government come in and say that they are forced to paint something that's against their conscience so i would say that your original position is the right one which is it kind of sucks right it kind of sucks mm -hmm. like i wish in my heart of hearts, I'm gay again. Like I wish that every baker would treat everyone equally and every person would treat everyone equally. They're not allowed, he wasn't allowed to deny them something that was in the store already because you can't deny based on those protected mm -hmm. categories. So he wouldn't have, by the Civil Rights Act, he wouldn't have been allowed to deny an uh, interracial couple a cake that existed there already. But could, he, he have, could he have denied them one that he would have had to draw a black woman and a white woman if he was a real racist? Yeah. I think the answer is that he could have denied them that, and that would have been very shitty, and he would be a racist and a really awful person. But if the answer is that the government should then come in and tell this man what to do, I would not be for that. Hmm. I see what you're saying. Um, I, I just That's just the cleanest way to deal with this related to freedom. Mm -hmm. it, it's kind of shitty. Like, freedom is messy. It's but, definitely shitty. Yeah. It's shitty and... But the government can't protect you from shitty. Mm -hmm. The government can't protect you from shitty. I mean, the whole point of having laws is effectively to protect you from shitty. I mean, you know, that's in part the reason why things like assault and rape and murder are banned. Now, I'm not comparing what happened in that case to those things, but, like, it's not an argument to just mention government as a pejorative. And I think that's what Ruben thinks it is, to just bring up, like, the government. And it's like, oh, that's it. Case closed. Discussion over. He mentioned the government. Therefore, 
obviously, whatever side the government on is incorrect. Now, what's funny is that in the context of making this broader argument about how the government should stay out, he admitted, in reference to the Civil Rights Act, how, well, the government had to go in there and clean all that up. Yeah, that's the fucking point now, isn't it? So, when uh, Rogan brings up, well, hold on now, should somebody be able to deny a black person a cake or anything, service, just because they're black? Because that was the crux of the Southern position uh, during the days of segregation and the days of Jim Crow. is like, no, it is our freedom to deny people for any reason we want. If they're black, we don't have to serve their kind. So Rogan realizes and accurately points out, well, hold on, how is that any different from the gay thing? And Rubin's response is basically, well, back then for the Civil Rights uh, Act, I mean, they were specifically referring to just race. By the way, that's not true. They actually weren't just referring to race. But even if that were true, let's say, Dave, there's still no way around the principle of that. The principle of what they were discussing during, uh, you know, those times when we had the Civil Rights Act and we had the Voting Rights Act, the principle that they were arguing over there is the same principle that applies today when it comes to gay people. And that, of course, is, hey, should you be able to deny people service for arbitrary characteristics that they're powerless to change? So if I were randomly to decide I don't serve, you know, whatever... People with, I say like I have a store. <laughs> I don't serve people with blue eyes or I don't serve people with brown eyes. Everybody would look at me like that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. That's an arbitrary thing. That person can't help it. And why the fuck would you discriminate on such a silly basis? That makes no sense. See, the thing, Dave, is nobody's saying if somebody comes into your store and they start knocking over shelves, nobody's forcing that person to serve the asshole who's causing havoc. You're well within your rights to kick that person out of the store. It's not an arbitrary characteristic they can't change that they're uh, causing havoc and knocking over shelves. You can kick them out for that reason. Um, the, the real crux of the issue is, should you be able to deny service to somebody for arbitrary characteristic that they can't change? And the government decided, no, you can't do that. So that's what a protected class is. Now, the fact that you brought up neo-Nazis... I mean, that shows how you don't understand the issue by any stretch of the imagination. Neo-Nazis are not a protected class. Being a neo-Nazi is not something that you're born with. You are effectively choosing to be a neo-Nazi. So if somebody from the Taliban or Al-Qaeda or a fucking neo-Nazi decided to come into the store and say, Hey, serve me. No, you're well within your rights to say, get the fuck out. But if somebody with brown eyes or blue eyes or brown hair or black skin or, you know, or a sexual attraction to the same sex came in, that's not something they can change or help, and therefore they're a protected class, and they should be protected under law. And yes, the person should have to make them a cake. So, he does, like, it's such a sloppy dodge to say, well, you know, at the time of the Civil Rights Act, there was a specific thing they were talking just about race. First of all, no, they weren't. Second of all, even if they were, the principle of that case is still what stands. And if you admit that the principle of, of, yes, you should serve somebody, b b if they have an arbitrary characteristic they can't change just because you don't like it doesn't mean you shouldn't serve them. If you admit that's the case for black people, why the fuck wouldn't that be the case for gay people? And then also, let me just say, I resent the fact that he drops the, the, the fact that he's gay in the middle of that conversation. Because Dave, why would that be relevant to the conversation? Unless you're playing identity politics and you think other people's opinion uh, isn't worth as much as yours because you're gay, so you have some sort of what you think is expertise on this issue or your opinion should rise above that of people who are straight like myself. Why are you playing identity politics when you're the guy who's built a career on saying I'm against identity politics? Why would you drop the fact that you're gay in that conversation? Are you trying to give your word more credibility than anybody else's word? Because that's playing identity politics. By the way, you know what else is really ironic about this? You know who else is playing identity politics? Whoever would reject service to a gay person. That's them playing identity politics because they're saying, I don't like gay people. I don't like gay people. I'm, I'm singling you out because of your identity and saying you're less than I am. And Dave Rubin is siding with the people who are playing identity politics. You know who's not playing identity politics? The gay person who wants to get served who's saying, just treat me like you treat everybody else. That's all I want you to do. Treat me like you treat anybody else. It, identity is irrelevant. Treat me like you treat a tr straight person. 
That's what they're asking for. So Mr. Anti-Identity Politics is playing identity politics if you side with the people who want to reject service based on fucking identity. And again, um, final point is don't, like, you have to understand what a protected class is and you have to understand that your neo-Nazi comparison is beyond ridiculous. A neo being a neo-Nazi is not an arbitrary characteristic you can't change. Being black or white or gay or straight, that is an arbitrary characteristic you can't change, so... That's a really bad point. <laughs> Don't fucking make that point again. Oh, God, that was terrible. By the way, to really show how backwards that ideology is, the one that says, oh, it's freedom to, to not serve gay people, all you have to do is imagine uh, even a slightly extreme scenario to realize what your true beliefs are on this issue. So, you know, back in the day, if there was a, a, a black family driving through a predominantly, you know, white area of Mississippi, let's say, and their car breaks down and they need gas, but they, they walk for four miles in 95 degree heat and they get to a gas station and then that gas station says, we don't serve your kind. Well, now all of a sudden they're in a life-threatening situation just by virtue of the fact that they can't get gas for their car on a 95 degree day and they just walk four miles, and they're being refused service. Then they try to go to the diner next door, and they say, we don't serve your kind. So they can't get food, they can't get a drink, they can't get gas for their car, it's 95 degrees outside, and nobody's going to help them. And if you're sticking by your principles, what you'd say is, hey man, freedom. They have the freedom to deny those people. Now, I would guess that most people, even most conservative people, given the facts of that situation, they'd say... Yeah, you know what? Serve them. You should have to serve them in that situation. That's all, that's all that anybody's saying in this. So when it comes to gays, exact same philosophy. A gay family in 2018 is driving through uh, Mississippi, car breaks down, walks four miles to get gas. They say, we don't serve gays. You know, let's say they walk in holding hands and they go, we don't serve your kind. They try to go to the diner next door. We don't serve your kind. So they can't get food. They can't get water. They can't get gas for their car. It's 95 degrees. Uh, in, in the summer, and they, they're they fucked. So, in that scenario, should they just be able to say, no, hashtag freedom, I don't serve your kind. No. They should not be legally allowed to do that. that. That's why we have protected classes. It's people who were historically discriminated against. But beyond that, the principle of the thing is what matters. And the principle is, you shouldn't be able to reject service for arbitrary characteristics that somebody can't change. And that's the correct principle. At least to people who really give a shit about living in a modern civilization.